Well, when it comes to immersion in a flight simulator, you really can't beat flying with a VR headset. Here I have the Rift S. I think uh, those are on sale right now for the 2019 Christmas season, and about 50 off at 349 so it might be a good time to jump in if you haven't. It's really awesome. There are a few things I don't like about VR, though, and one is using dials. Now, as you can see, I'll select the uh, altitude bot dial here, and I'll twist it, but at some point I can't twist my... my uh, uh, risk anymore and I have to release it and then try to re-engage it. Well that's fine except in this case there's a sync button in the middle of that so as I'm working my way up to the altitude I want to set it at with multiple turns uh, if I accidentally hit that uh, button in the middle like that uh, it resets the cursor back to the current level and I have to start all over and I find that quite annoying. It's hard to reach out and hit those points exactly, especially knobs that have stacked levels to them, like on the GPS and so on. So that's one of the issues that I really don't like about VR flying, is trying to set the dials using that uh, uh, controller. Not bad for pushing buttons. Now here we'll do the, uh, the, the uh, course, I mean the uh, heading bug's not hard to set, except it's very hard to hit an exact number, because just very small angular movements can change it a degree or two. So if you're flying a, trying to set a course or something, it's difficult. The frequencies here, you can see setting the frequencies is the same problem. It's very hard to exactly hit that frequency that you want because uh, there's no detents or anything like you would have with a knob. So this is kind of annoying um, to have the, the uh, there you can see the button in the middle and, and there's various levels. It's very difficult to hit those targets exactly. So to find that uh, slightly annoying. Uh, kind of detract from the immersion. Here using the heading uh, cursor there you can see that if you change the cursor and accidentally hit that button in the center you're in trouble. Flaps the same thing. You can start the flaps up or down and uh, you find that uh, it's easy to overshoot and overspeed the flaps at a speed higher than you intended to by accidentally extending slightly more. So in trying to find a better solution I was talking to the guys at Sim Innovations we were talking about the Knobster. Now the Knobster is made for air manager panels to allow you to select a, a knob that's in one of their panels and then use this multi-purpose knob to change the values. And I was wondering, after talking to them, if there wasn't some way we couldn't incorporate this into VR. Actually this is a plug-and-play uh, USB piece of hardware so uh, we wondered if we could interface directly, directly with uh, X-Plane and uh, I'm going to show you what we came up with, a way to use this Knobster in VR. So now you can open a, a plug-in from uh, VR and uh, select Knob XP and uh, show in VR and it brings a window into VR that you can resize and it has a number of different uh, dials and controls on it that are listed. Now these can be adjusted I'll explain later. You can determine what these are. You can even make your own fairly easily. So the list scrolls using the thumb controller. Let's select flaps and we can select the flaps up and down using the uh, the knob. Use the inner or outer knob since there's a single control there. And we can raise and lower the flaps. And that's how easy it is. You can feel the positive detent for each position. You can also make selection by just pointing the controller at uh, one of the selections and pulling the trigger uh, just as you would select anything else in the VR cockpit. So let's select the uh, G1000PFD COM uh, knob and now you can see that the knob uh, including the inner and outer knob and the uh, button function are fully functional using the knobster. So all we got to do is just know where that knob is by placing it some convenient place and just by tactile feel we can find that knob and make our inputs. So now let's uh, select the G1000 PFD uh, range selection and then uh, we will be able to utilize that knob. The uh, knob will give us a smaller and larger range either knob and the uh, push button uh, will give us the uh, to, to toggle that on and off. Same thing with the uh, as we uh, select the pan function which is incorporated with that same dial we can uh, push the button to engage it 
and then we'll uh, uh, the large knob will give us left right and the small knob will, knob will give us up down now if we want to change modes and we don't have the controller in our hand we can uh, just push the button and hold it it turns green and then we can use the uh, the uh, knobs to select a mode and then pressing it a second time engages it so it's uh, we would uh, press the button and hold it for over half a second that puts it in the edit mode and we'll turn the cursor green and now we can go up and down until we find the one we want press it again turns blue and now we're in that mode so it gives us the ability without using the uh, controller uh, to switch between modes which is often useful you will notice this with the altitude selection here that the inner knob and outer knob functionality is exactly what you see on the screen in the uh, virtual cockpit so uh, you can set that just exactly the same way for example here let's select the course in barrow you can see the uh, outer knob controls the barometric pressure and we can set the altimeter uh, there uh, the inner or smaller knob uh, controls the course for the VOR well we'll have to select uh, course on the uh, nav display there and then you can see the uh, small knob can set that so very flexible and ability to uh, control things without having uh, having the precision of filling each click there's uh, the click to center the the, the uh, two uh, course now this also offers the flexibility to support custom uh, commands for different aircraft here in the uh, laminar research SF-50 vision jet you can select the starter which is a, a custom uh, command and we can program that you can see this rotation one notch of the uh, thing it's nice that you can feel the clicks so you feel the clicks uh, with all the rotation of the switches each click here's the uh, fuel selector you can see that's another custom one for the uh, the uh, SF-50 and that works down there you can see that swapping the tanks and flaps you can feel each little click as you lower the flaps no more missing the mark there just one click and you're down one level and you can reach up there and set the flaps any way you want and we're ready to taxi out so you get the idea here I'll show you a few more things as we go on of some of the other other functionality that's available uh, with some other aircraft I have to tell you that if you're uh, new to uh, VR flying, it looks like my head's moving a lot, but it's not noticeable because your eyes move, stay fixed. Even though your head's moving, your eyes stay fixed where you're looking, and you don't really notice it at all, but it is kind of uh, disconcerting when you watch a video someone's made using a VR. Uh, all I can say is it's not noticeable at all. Uh, your head is moving but your eyes stay the same and that's one reason I was never a big fan of the head shake on FSX sometimes they put that head shake in there uh, your, your eyes don't move with your head your eyes often stay focused on whatever you're looking at even though your head's moving so it's not quite as noticeable unless you're under very high G conditions or so on so anyway let's take a look at uh, the uh, Cessna 172 So now here in the Cessna 172 stock aircraft for X-Plane, uh, let's select the Knob XP uh, plug-in and select uh, the, uh, bring it to VR and you can see that it says no uh, modes configured. Uh, now we need to go to the uh, settings and we're going to have to do this in the uh, 2D mode because the settings dialog does not show up in VR. So here in the, uh, the uh, 2D uh, screen, you can see the settings dialog. It shows a listing of all the possible modes that are located in the uh, modes folder. And you can see that uh, you can just select them uh, by just clicking on the ones that you want to be shown. Uh, they turn green. Uh, you can select any of the ones, all of them, whatever, and they'll be placed in that menu that will appear uh, on your uh, in VR on your computer. You can also show them in a 2D screen too, but the functionality is really not as, as great there. So anyway, then uh, you can see there's a time of day. There's just all just a wide variety of things and anything that 
can be controlled by a command in X-Plane can be can be used and controlled with the with the knobster in uh, in VR. So once you're happy with those, you can close that, and then uh, let's just uh, just for the heck of it, let's show this in uh, in uh, non-VR. You can resize that menu so that it shows just the uh, the available uh, choices. So back in VR, we have our menu back uh, available. Again, we can resize it to show the choices we desire. Uh, they do repeat, so you can resize it so it shows everything just once. But if you make it larger, uh, certain items will repeat. So uh, you can see some of the things that we can control here. We have the ability to, uh, to adjust the time of day. And we'll grab the knob here, and we'll rotate it. And we can change the, uh, the time of the day uh, by just rotating the knob, either one. Uh, now there is acceleration available on these knobs, so I have them set slightly differently. One's very a high rate of turn and one's low rate, but you can adjust that uh, here again, pushing to select uh, and then selecting with the uh, knob instead of using uh, the controller. Now we'll select uh, the view left, right, up and down. We can uh, use the button is set to reset the view, and then uh, here left and right, and we can use uh, left, right, up, down, back, forward. You can see there's back, forward. It's kind of hard to tell in VR uh, on a flat screen, but uh, when you're in it, it's very obvious. And you can, so basically you can adjust your seat position uh, right using the knob. There's the view up and down, and you can see you can raise it up and down. If I hold my head still here, uh, you can see it. But you can change the the cutoff angle of the uh, uh, the windscreen. Here's the fuel selector. Now that's a custom command for the uh, Laminar Research Cessna 172 uh, SP, and you can see how it's just one click. You, it's very definite. There's no guessing like with the controller where you you tend to overshoot or undershoot, whatever. So let's take a look at one more aircraft. So I've uh, done a number of the uh, custom uh, commands for the Zebo, and uh, just want to give you a quick view of that. Uh, it's especially useful for the master control, the uh, MCP, the master control panel for the autopilot, uh, because you can swap between modes just by using the, uh, uh, the knob to switch without having to pick up the controller. Um, Let's, uh, we can just press the, as I showed before, you can just press the uh, button and that would uh, change to the editing mode. It's green and then you can select uh, whatever you want. Here in this case, let's select the, uh, the captain's OBS and you can see the just uh, control of that with the, with the knob. Press it in for more than half a second and then select another one let's try altitude and you can select uh, the altitude on the MCP um, all the MCP functions are there uh, and you can uh, create a custom menu with just a few if that's all you wanted to use it for uh, but in, in VR as you know it's a pain with the controller and uh, if you're flying with a yoke and a throttle uh, you can place the uh, knobster just next to your uh, your throttle and just reach over and you can change modes uh, and jump around. Uh, of course the controller is also available if you have it in your hand so it gives you the option either way but um, I found it to be a good addition to flying in VR and uh, really like it so far. So I um, just wanted to make you know now this is going to be a um, this is going to be a free plug-in available uh, probably from the Sim Innovations website the uh, the Knobster, of course, is for sale there. Now, this is only going to work with the new Knobster, which is the USB version, which is truly plug-and-play. Uh, you can just plug it in, put the uh, plug-in into your folder with, uh, with X-Plane, uh, in X-Plane's plug-ins folder, and, and it should work right out of the box. I want to show you real quickly here how we create uh, the custom uh, choices for the settings menu. 
in your uh, explain folder uh, you'll have the of course the resources folder and then the plugins folder and in the plugins folder is where you place the knob XP uh, knob XP folder it has the uh, plugin in the 64-bit and then the aircrafts uh, in the aircraft folder it'll save the configuration for any aircraft you've used Knobster uh, with uh, so that it'll set up those menus for you and then this in this uh, modes folder is a mode is a, a folder with all of the modes that are going to appear on that settings menu now if we pick one for example uh, time of day uh, down towards the bottom here and uh, open that folder I'm using a notepad plus uh, plus which is a freeware program which is a great way to edit these things and I'm going to open that up for you and show you you can see uh, it's just a simple JSON file and, and you put time of the day uh, you put in the uh, minor and major which is the small and the large knob you can also put an acceleration value in uh, as I said right now the minor acceleration or the small knob if you turn it la counterclockwise it's going to turn the time up and if you're going to turn it counterclockwise it's going to turn the time down a you know, major knob is the same and then uh, we have uh, an order which orders how they show up on the uh, on the menu so that's the basic information you can adjust all those values uh, for your own uh, aircraft and you can create your own very easily following this template uh, and once you have them set up they'll show up on the settings menu and you can make them active for a certain aircraft as you can see, Zebo, I've got the speed reference, uh, auto brakes, flaps, so on, and uh, it's pretty—it's just very handy, I find, uh, compared to trying to uh, to use a controller for everything. There's times when you don't have the controller in your hand, and you can use the knob. There's the uh, windshield wipers, uh, the right windshield wiper. Uh, we can select. Uh, see engine start so you can see that's really handy to have the each click you can feel each click of that and it's much easier than trying to do it with a controller where you tend to overshoot um, auto brake you can see the auto brake uh, being turned with the knob um, obviously some are more practical than others but uh, but all in all, it's been an imp it's improved my uh, experience flying in VR. Here again, selecting by pressing the knob for more than half a second, and then and then uh, selecting uh, say altitude or whatever. Um, there's MCP heading and so on. Again, con controller can be used selecting too. Let's get the flaps. You can see you can feel each click on the flaps, and the flaps go up and down. Uh, so if you're flying an approach, you can just leave that in the flaps. Once you're ready to start extending the flaps, you can just reach down there and click each notch down. So there's really no limit to what you can do with it, and I hope you uh, uh, might give it a try. So thanks for watching. If you uh, are interested, you might check SimInnovations.com where you can uh, go to their wiki and download the uh, plugin for free. Uh, the uh, Knobster is for sale there. I know uh, it's been tough for them to keep them in stock, but uh, you can check there and order a Knobster. I think they're about 90 euros. In uh, full disclosure, I am uh, it was my uh, little invention, the Knobster, and I'm receiving a, uh, a $5 uh, per unit uh, royalty for the, for the uh, Knobster. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to uh, receive notifications when I put a new video out, just subscribe and click the little bell. I appreciate your subscriptions, and uh, when I come up with other things I think might be of interest, I'll be posting future videos. Thanks for watching.